Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? All right. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit more like a beard, don't you think? Yeah, anyway. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Revelation. Book of Revelation, chapter 2. Now, you remember, here we have the seven letters to the seven angels of the seven churches of Asia Minor. Uh, and uh, so as we take a look at this, now remember last time we looked at Ephesus, uh, the letter that went to Ephesus. Today we're going to look at the church uh, in Smyrna. Uh, Smyrna. And uh, I want you to actually have your Bibles open, so get them, and if you have to pause this, pause this, but get your Bibles and take a look at Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, starting in verse 8. Okay, you there? Okay. All right. Now, in verse 8, I want you to follow along. Uh, and it, these messages always kind of start off in the same way, but then there's a little bit different. Um, and under the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Okay? Now, this one, he doesn't really have a whole lot bad to say to them. Um, and uh, notice he says, who was dead and is alive. Um, what a beautiful thought here. He's reminding them that he went through the trial of death and that he was victorious over death. Okay? Uh, and that's important. Remember that as we continue in this. He goes on in verse 9 and says, I know thy works. He always says that, okay? I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blaspheme, uh, blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, let's back up. He says, uh, I know thy works and tribulation. Now, apparently something was going on in Smyrna that... Uh, that created a lot of, of problems. Uh, there was a, a very, very famous uh, early church father who was uh, one of the protégés of the Apostle John. And uh, he was one of the early church fathers that we know quite a bit about. His name was Polycarp. Polycarp. Uh, and uh, he actually did a lot of writing, and we find out that Polycarp was apparently the pastor of this church here in Smyrna. So he was probably the angel of the church in Smyrna. He says, I know thy tribulation, and they had lots of tribulation, and thy and poverty. Now, we're not sure, but we are led to believe through some of the things that we read outside the Bible uh, that, that when a uh, when a person declared themselves to be a Christian, they would be cast out of the synagogue. Now, what does it mean to be cast out of the synagogue? Did they pick them up and throw them out? No. It meant that they could no longer do business with the people who were the Jews of the synagogue. Now, for a lot of people, that wiped them out financially. Okay, it really hurt them. And so when they declared themselves to be Christians, they would be taken out of the synagogue, off of the synagogue rules. They would no longer be able to do business with their Jewish uh, people. And, uh, and, and so that would lead to a lot of poverty. Okay, and, uh, and so when he talks about, I, I know thy poverty, he's, he's saying, yeah, I know it's rough. But then he goes on and says, but thou art rich, because you have God, you have Christ, you have each other, and you are rich. See, we shouldn't be looking in our wallets or our bank accounts to find out how rich we are. We should be looking at the blessings that God has given us. And you need to, every day, just kind of review all of the blessings that God has given you so that you can rejoice in the fact that, yeah, you might not have a lot of money, but you are rich. He goes on and says, And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, these people were probably of Jewish descendant, and so descendants, so they could probably say, Yes, we are Jews. But they weren't worthy to be considered children of Israel. 
because they were doing some some terrible things they were treating because they were so angry because they were so upset with the christians they were behave, behaving in a well in a in a way that did not befit the chosen people of israel and uh, the synagogue of satan wow that that is strong language now keep in mind uh, there are many commentaries say, well, this wasn't actually Satan. But also remember, book in, back in the book of Daniel, it talks about how that one of the kings was was actually being controlled by Satan. So it is very possible that this the people of this synagogue were turning against Polycarp and his church, and were doing so under the leadership of Satan himself. Now remember, angels and Satan are not omnipresent. God is everywhere. Omnipresent. You know what that means? Omnipresent means you can be everywhere at the same time. God is the only one who's omnipresent. Angels aren't. You and I aren't. Satan can only be at one place at a time. Now, he has lots of demons and lots of people doing his bidding. So it may seem like he's everywhere, but he can only be one place at a time. Uh, he, he goes on and he says in verse 10, now I want you to get this. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Here he's saying, you're going to suffer. <laughs> Matter of fact, he doesn't just tell them they're going to suffer. He tells them how some of them are going to suffer. He said, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. And be faithful even unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, the crown of life was for those who gave their lives for God. And so what he's saying is here is, uh, don't worry. The suffering's only going to last 10 days, and then they're going to kill you. <laughs> that doesn't sound like good news, does it? You know what? We don't know how we're going to end this life. We could die today, tomorrow, next week, next month. We could die 100 years from now. We don't know. But these folks, some of them knew how and when they were going to die. And they were going to go to be with Jesus Christ. And they were going to go to be with those that they loved that had gone on before them. And they knew that it was only going to take 10 days. Now, here's the thing. You say, that's terrible. Well, well maybe it's wonderful depending on how you view it. Are you willing to give your life for God? He said, remember, uh, you know, be faithful even unto death. You know, I'm, I'm praying that if I ever have to suffer that way, that I will be faithful unto death. He says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Okay? The first death, is when you die, you know, bleh, you're dead. The second death is hell. And here he's saying, listen, you don't have to worry about hell. This was to the church of Smyrna. So what I want you to do is give me the name of the pastor of the church in Smyrna. Okay, now we think, we're pretty sure it was Polycarp. <gasps> I said, I gave it away. Oh, I get, better give you another question. So, question number one. Who was the pastor of the church in Smyrna? I'm not going to write that out. I'm not going to put it in the email. You're just going to have to listen to this and answer that. But question number two is, what is the last word of the first phrase of verse 10? Okay? The last word of the first phrase of verse 10. I'll give you a hint. It's the word right before the semicolon. Yeah. Anyway, hey, that's it for today. Love you guys, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.